are these people? This is actually somewhat good news, mm. <laughs> but more bullshit sure. within the good news. So, um, so I titled this South Africa anti-Semitic, since we talked a lot about anti-Semitism, you know, yep. the last few weeks, and especially with your past, uh, with your previous segment. Um, what do we mean? So, uh, very happy to see a lot of people in independent media reporting on this today. Uh, this is, I'm, and I'm going to, I'm going to Frankenstein this segment. Um, but it'll make sense why. Uh, but this first part is from Common Dreams. Uh, this article is written by Julia Conley, and she writes, As death toll in Gaza rises, Israeli officials fear possible genocide charges at ICJ. In general, it's hard to prove an intention of genocide because no public statements to that effect are made during the fighting, said one expert. But these irresponsible statements about erasing Gaza will require Israel to explain why they don't reflect such an intention. Good morning, uh, Julia. So, so she continues, top officials in the Israel Defense Forces and Israeli government have reportedly been warned by a top legal expert that the International Court of Justice could issue an injunction requiring the country to halt its embarment on Gaza, following a notion filed by South Africa last week. Haratz reported that the Israeli security establishment and the state attorney's office are concerned that the court could soon take action to force a ceasefire to, to, to protect civilian lives. IDF Chief of Staff Herzl Lavev, Lalev, I guess it's Lalev, I guess. Lalev? Yeah. Whatever. Is among those who have been warned that South Africa's petition could be successful. Yeah. The outlet reported, and a hearing on how the government should deal with the matter was held Monday at the Israel Foreign Ministry. Mm. As Common Dreams reported last week, South Africa sent its complaint to the ICJ that it is gravely concerned with the plight of civilians caught in the present Israel attacks on the Gaza Strip due to the indiscriminate use of force and forcible removed, removal of inhabitants, and called on the ICJ to take action to force Israel to immediately cease its attacks on Gaza's 2.3 million residents. They're like, come on, you don't have to kill that many civilians for an apartheid. We managed, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, uh, so shout out to Crab. He says... I think it's a distraction. What they're going to do? They need nine countries. Well, and that might true, but know. but you know, but this could be a pop off. Yeah, you know, can, uh, in terms of I would like to think, I would hope, right? You know? And I think especially since a lot, the majority of countries, you know, especially civilians, are against what well, Israel no. is doing. It will kind of force their hand on other countries. And I would say, argue in the global south, either Malaysia really or right. Turkey also joined on this, right? I think Turkey is also joined on this as well. I think mm -hmm. from what I heard today, and I think so, the, Hague, the Hague said it wants to get involved here too. Which okay, so I'm not sure what that does. I think, but well, I think. Yeah, distraction, but I think in this way, Crab, in the best possible sense. Um, because this will be in the media for for a bit. Yeah. Um, I hope, and at least in our I, media. Uh, we, yeah, so, so I think it's a good thing in that regard, but yeah. we will see. Um, at least 21,978 Palestinians have been killed and 57,697 have been injured in Israeli air and ground strikes on Gaza since the IDF began its bombardment in retaliation for Hamas's assault on southern Israel on October 7th, which killed 1,139 people. Top officials in Israel have made numerous statements suggesting their overarching goal is to clear Gaza and the West Bank of all Palestinian residents, with National Security Minister Itmar ben Gvir saying Monday that the fighting presents an opportunity for Gaza residents to leave and for Israel to expand its settlements in the occupied Palestinian territories. Like this Previously... Them saying this openly. Like, what? Oh, yeah. You know. And, we got, and, and that, we'll get more into this later. Yeah. Um, 
or previously Prime Minister Bibi, said the so-called voluntary I immigration of Palestinians is a goal, while President Isaac Zarak said all civilians in Gaza are responsible for Hamas's attack, and Defense Minister Yoav Gallant said the military would collectively punish Palestinians in Gaza, whom he called human animals, for the October 7th attack. Keep in mind that voluntary migration is a war crime under Geneva Code in and of itself. So, right. well, yeah, you know. Um, Professor e e Evlav Eblik. Sure. Eblik. Um, Eblik, Eblik. An expert on international law at Tel Aviv University told Haaretz that such statements could be viewed by the ICJ as evidence of intent to harm civilians in Gaza. Yeah. Genocide is a violation, the proof of which court in which court requires two elements. Uh, Lepchi told the outlet. First, you have to show intention of annihilation, and second, certain actions in the field that promote this intention. According okay. to South Africa, the intention is proven by statements of senior Israeli figures and a public atmosphere of erasing or flattening Gaza and the widespread harm to civilians and the hunger in Gaza show the factual element of the deed. You know what? Yes. I was going to do this later, but we're going to do this now, so I'm going to zoom ahead. Okay. We featured this last week with Brett. Yeah. Uh, I think... No, it's not this one. Next one. Um, we're going to use this one. So we featured this with Brett. This was what I pulled from Twitter handle... Uh, Bruno Marques, I guess mm. it's Portuguese. But again, the idea is that there needs to be intent. Yep. Here's your intent. Let's remember what Amalek has done to you, says our Holy Bible. We do remember, and we are fighting. The dangerous now go and smite Amalek, utterly destroy all that they have, and spare them not, but slay both men and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. First Samuel. Mm. It's, an entire it's an entire nation out there that is responsible. It's not true. This rhetoric about civilians not aware, aware, not, aware not involved, it's absolutely not true. Uh -huh. There will be no electricity, no food, no water, no fuel. Everything will be closed. We are fighting against human animals. We are acting accordingly. By the constant uh, concern which the world is showing for the Palestinian people and is actually showing for these horrible, inhuman animals who have done the worst atrocities uh -huh. that this century has seen. We are fighting against human animals. Gaza won't return to what it was before. We will eliminate everything. Human beasts are dealt with accordingly. Israel has imposed a total blockade on Gaza. There are Israelis who describe the Palestinian in Gaza as animals or less than animals. I do not equate them with animals because that is an insult to animals. That is your opinion, Dr. Mordecai. Finish them off quickly and leave no memory of them. Race them, their families, mothers and children. These animals can no longer live. If you have an Arab neighbor, don't wait until he comes into your house. Enter his house and shoot. Creating a severe humanitarian and crisis Gaza is a necessary means to achieve the goal. Gaza will become a place where no human being can exist. For the purpose of the goal, do you think that they will, we can kill hundreds of hundreds of thousands of Palestinians in the Gaza Strip and this thing will pass? Look now in the foreign media, there is a report in the name of Israel that a million Palestinians have already left to the south of Gaza and anyone who stayed there is considered a terrorist. Invest this energy in one thing, erasing all of Gaza from the face of the earth. The Gazan monsters will fly to the southern fence and try to enter Egyptian territory or they will die, right? Gaza should be erased. Far-right minister nuking Gaza is an option. Population should go to Ireland or deserts. Israel MK says use doomsday weapons. Annihilate Gaza now. Now. 
Gaza needs to turn into Dresden. How many American soldiers were killed in the battle for Hiroshima? Israel has dropped 18,000 tons of bombs on Gaza, 1.5 times more than bomb dropped on Hiroshima. This land is ours, the whole country, all of it, including Gaza, including Lebanon, the whole of the promised land. We're finishing off Gaza. We are a light onto the non-Jews, aka Goyim. Um, yeah. Yeah, so intent. <laughs> I think that's enough intent, but I think even like, even with this, I think the public, we've been seeing a lot of these clips on Twitter and social media, like I'm sure that there's just going to be an inundation over the next few days and weeks of clips like this that which I'm sure Twitter, Elon is probably going to try and block mm -hmm. uh, in light of this uh, trial, uh, which is going to be next week, by the way. But, um, but I think, Crab, just in light of what you're saying, yeah, it's a distraction, but I think this is the kind of distraction that I think is a good thing because yeah. I think it will get, it will activate people like just, no, I think even more so given what we've seen on social media at minimum. And I think it will force global South countries to kind of step up and actually kind of make a stand against Israel, which I'm sure many will. Um, but, um, but we'll see. Uh, but anyway, um, so we'll go back here. Uh, so. Ebla continues. In general, it's hard to prove an intention of genocide because no public statements to ha that effect are made during the fighting, Ebla added. But these irresponsible statements about erasing Gaza will require Israel to explain why they don't reflect such an intention. Author and activist Naomi Klein pointed out that while Israel does not recognize the authority of the ICC, which investigates accusations of war crimes and prosecutes individuals, is a party to the Genocide Convention, which allows the ICJ to deal with judicial disputes between countries, including when they're accused of genocide. A termination by the ICJ that Israel has failed to stop a genocide by its military forces or has committed genocidal acts against Palestinian civilians wouldn't necessarily mean that an injunction would be immediately enforced, Ibalik told Haaretz. But if it determines in a ruling or even a temporary injunction that a suspicion exists that Israel is committing genocide, you have to think about what this will say for the historical narrative. For this reason, too, the proceeding must be taken seriously. The ICJ is also considering a complaint made by Ukraine regarding Russia's invasion and a complaint against not Neymar about its persecution of the Rohingya, yeah. Rohingya minority group. Thank mm -hmm. you, Reed. South Africa's complaint is intended to add Israel to this disrespectful group and verify also embarrass the U.S. as its ally, he Blake told Haaretz. Despite the fact that a majority of Americans support a call for a ceasefire in Gaza, the U.S. government has continued providing Israel with military support and defending its actions. Independent journalist San Husseini wrote Monday that a volunteer has compiled a list of international officials whose ceasefire advocates can get in touch with directly to pressure other governments to back South Africa's petition. Beyond War, World Beyond War and Roots Action have also lodged actions to pressure other countries to support South Africa as the ICJ. If a majority of the world's nations call for a ceasefire, yet fail to press for prosecution for Israel, what is to stop Israel from ethnically cleansing all Palestinians? Read World Beyond War's letter, in which it urged supporters to send to governments that have been critical of Israel. For that matter, what's going to stop other nations from repeating a horror of this magnitude? Um, 
So shout out to Hotspot and friend of the show Nick Cruz. Uh, he showed this today. Uh, very glad he did. He's actually waiting to see he was going to do something on this. Mm. Um, so he's going to kind of give an overview of what we just read. So go ahead, read. Next Thursday, the International Court of Justice will hear a claim from South Africa accusing Israel of committing a genocide. This is especially significant because of South Africa's history of fighting against brutal apartheid. This hits even harder when you realize that Israel supported the apartheid in South Africa. And we already have countries that are coming out to endorse it even before the trial. We have Malaysia and Turkey that already came out in support of the genocide charges against Israel. And if you have the time, I highly recommend that you check out this document. It's 84 pages, but it's well documented and it's devastating for the state of Israel. I want you guys to understand, the hardest thing when it comes to proving genocide is proving the intent of committing genocide. Except in this case, we had an Israeli official that was like, We want everyone in Gaza dead! Anyone complicit with Hamas should be killed! Everyone in Gaza is complicit with Hamas! The entire Gaza population are legitimate targets! And while Israel was saying this unhinged garbage, you had South Africa that was just writing it down. South Africa was gathering the receipts, fam. Now next Thursday, South Africa will appear in the International Court of Justice, look at Israel in the face, and say, this you? I predict that this case will be a historic moment where the hypocrisy behind the Western rules-based order is finally exposed. Ciao to Nick from yeah. RBN and a hotspot um, for saying, paraphrasing everything, you know, that Julia wrote. So, <clears throat> so yeah, so we, so that's what South Africa is doing. So obviously, you know, uh, there's going to be some bullshit that Israel is going to do with this. Speaking of. Um, speaking of. <laughs> <laughs> the reason yeah. why I added this guy to the thumbnail. Yep. Yeah. Is that. According to the messenger, I I'm not sure where this is based from, but this is what I found during my research <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Israel may hire Alan Dershowitz to defend against genocide charge at UN. Do you ever uh, look report. at someone and wonder what is going on inside their head? Like, what? This yeah. guy? Uh, uh, so, no. Um... So, so the report is, if the Israeli government is considering naming controversial retired Harvard Law Professor Alan Dershowitz to help defend it against a suit mm -hmm. brought by South Africa at the United Nations that accuses Israel of committing genocide in Gaza, Haaretz reported. Epstein's lawyer, yep. Alan Dershowitz. Yep. yep. Dershowitz, yep. 85, is a one-time liberal icon who shot to stardom as a member of O.J. Simpson's dream team. He was also accused of association with you know who. Not gonna yep. say his name, but we all know who. I just uh, did, he so. has repeatedly denied wrongdoing. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Um, Dershowitz did not immediately return an email request for comment. No, of course he wouldn't. No. Nope. Dershowitz was also part of the Hollywood mogul Harvey Weinstein's uh, defense Harvey team. Harvey Weinstein's defense team. It is Hard 2018 well. trial for uh, S18, yeah. a string of inspired actresses, and he helped defend then President Donald Trump in his first impeachment trial. Weinstein was convicted and is now in jail while Trump was impeached but not convicted. Known as a staunch defender of Israel, Dershowitz has also been a frequent critic of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Warning against yeah, now whose efforts to overhaul the country's judiciary. Uh -huh. On Monday, the Israeli Supreme Court rejected yeah, now whose pu push to remake the courts. The case at the UN comes after South Africa referred Israel to the International Court of Justice at The Hague for war crimes. Israel responded that it would defend itself against those charges 
accusing South Africa of committing an absurd blood libel. Israel's first goal is to block a possible restraining order by the court to halt the Gaza fighting. Um, uh, and he so put and up, he said, someone like, already pulled the Kim interview from when he admitted to working for Israel. I remember that. He rage quit the stream. So, you know. Israel was one of the founders of the ICJ in the 1950s following the Holocaust. An unidentified senior Israeli official told Haaretz, which first reported the outreach to Dershowitz. Who would have believed that they're trying to accuse us of genocide when Hamas is the one who committed intentional genocide against us on October 7th? Dershowitz has slammed the ICJ's legitimacy in the past. In 2004, he said that the court was founded on discrimination. He was a lawyer? A, a mm -hmm. professor? Yep. yep. God. <sighs> Like, yep. you're in the bomb of the barrel. Jesus. I know. Um, <laughs> a state like Israel has no chance of being represented on this tribunal, just it has no prospects of being chosen to serve on the UN Security Council, Joshua said 20 years ago, comparing it to a Jim Crow court. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. I'm glad you laughed. Uh, well, what else can you do? You know, uh, comparing it to a Jim Crow court in the U.S. South. When a uh, black man appeared in a Mississippi court, the verdict is in uh, his case was a foregone. Oh, yeah, he's writing Israeli burning. <laughs> Excuse me, uh, Anna. Is he really going to come in like the Southern lawyer on this? That's definitely oh, what he God. thinks he is here. Oh, South okay. Africa has been a staunch opponent of Israel's war in Gaza, which was sparked by Hamas' attack on Israel on October 7th, which nearly killed nearly 1,200 people and saw mm -hmm. many women yeah, finally, allegedly. allegedly, with all the things. Yeah, I'm going to just gonna say allegedly on that. <laughs> so Public statement, you know what? No, we're not going to, no, we're not going to read that. <laughs> yeah. Um, not gonna read that either. Like, yeah, yeah, we're not gonna read the rest of this. So, cool. <laughs> um, this guy, any thoughts, Reef? Before I get to more bullshit, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna steal Crab's joke. The victimhood is on a, a new level. Yeah, I mean, literally, he's <laughs> trying to equate himself to like exploited black men in Jim Crow courts. Like, what, what, huh? Like, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so, don't play this yet. So, now that Israel has to defend itself, so this guy, this bullshit, like, this is, uh, for those of you who don't know, is Elon Levy. He's a U.S., a Israeli government spokesperson. So, hmm. he's just popped up on my Twitter feed saying a whole lot of shit. Like, I had to mute this guy because he just got so annoying. Yeah. Um, But... Just play it. Yeah, just cool. play it, please. Playing condemns South Africa's decision to play advocate Already for the devil like an AI. to make itself criminally complicit with the perpetrators of the October 7 massacre. On October 7, South Africa openly aligned itself with the Hamas rapist regime when it blamed yeah, Israel okay. for Hamas's violation of the ceasefire and covered up Hamas's crimes against humanity. It is now aiding and abetting that machinery of genocide. Collaborating with the perpetrators of genocide is, alas, not new to South Africa, which backed Omar al-Bashir after he was indicted for genocide in Darfur. While the Hamas rapist regime does everything to maximize civilian casualties with its despicable human shield strategy, Israel is employing measures unprecedented in the history of warfare to minimize civilian casualties. We have been clear in word and in deed that we are targeting the October 7 monsters and are innovating ways to uphold international law, including the principles of proportionality, precaution and distinction in the context of a counter-terror battlefield no army has faced before. That is why we spent weeks urging residents of northern Gaza to evacuate before the ground offensive. To warn civilians, we placed over 70,000 phone calls 
sent 13 million text messages, left 14 million voice messages, and dropped nearly 7 million leaflets, urging civilians to evacuate temporarily from their safety, informing them about humanitarian pauses and precise evacuation routes. That is why we secured humanitarian corridors for civilians to escape Hamas. That is why we set up a helpline for them. Palestinian civilians to tell our army if Hamas was stopping them fleeing. And that is why we designated a humanitarian zone you? in one of the only places in Gaza where Hamas was not already hiding behind civilians. The Hamas rapist regime bears full moral responsibility for all casualties in this war that it launched on October 7 and is waging from inside and underneath hospitals, schools, mosques, homes, and UN facilities. In giving political and legal cover to the October 7 massacre and the Hamas Human Shield strategy, South Africa has made itself criminally complicit with okay. Hamas. Stop fucking lying. Thank you. Yeah. Like. <laughs> You're done. You're done. I don't I even mean, know what to say on that. Uh, I mean, if they're going to go into court with that attitude... <laughs> uh, they're going to get fucked. Mm, mm, so I'm going to bring the elbow. Mm, mm. Like, dude. Okay. 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 Stuff that's easily debunked now. And not to mention all projection. Right? right. Like, you know, what we're, we're going to talk about Israeli rapes. So they are pretty, like, you know their hostage. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna be bad if that's their that's their move. Is just to continue to lie. Okay. Um. Uh, good luck with that. Got another clip. Uh. Although this one is a little funnier. Uh. Because this guy looks like he's gonna pee his pants. Uh. This is White House National Security Council spokesman John Kirby. Yeah. Uh. I guess this is from today when he was asked. You know about this upcoming trial. Um, very short, twenty seconds. But here's what he said: South Africa's filed this 84-page lawsuit against Israel, accusing them of genocide. Israel says that this is blood libel. Does Washington agree? And where does this put Washington and Pretoria? We find this uh, submission meritless, counterproductive, and meritless. completely without any basis in fact whatsoever. Right. Oh, oh, oh god okay they're yeah. fucking shitting themselves yeah <laughs> like okay good luck with that um, yeah so we have <clears throat> one of our favorite people who yeah. had some shit to say about all of well she wrote this article before this happened but it still applies here uh, Caitlin Johnstone uh, she wrote last week uh, Israel says it's anti-Semitic to invoke the Genocide Convention over Gaza. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, no. Backwards, backwards. There we go. Yay. South Africa has invoked the Genocide Convention, formally launching a case at the UN's International Court of Justice accusing Israel of genocide for its mass atrocities in the Gaza Strip. Israel immediately responded by... <sighs> Accusing South Africa of blood libel. Blood libel, for those who don't know, refers to the way medieval Europeans would falsely accuse Jews of murdering Christians and blood sacrifices in order to justify persecuting them. Which is to say, Israel has responded to South Africa's accusations by accusing South Africa of anti-Sentinism. False accusations of anti-Sentinism are all Israel and its defenders have left. It's the only tool left in their toolbox. Once you've exhausted but, but Hamas and but October 7th excuses, they make for Israel's deliberate butchery of civilians by airstrikes and siege warfare, war accusations of hating Jews is all that remains. And it's so sick because it exploits a healthy impulse in those of us who oppose racism and genocide and does so in order to defend racist acts of genocide. It causes people who care deeply about human rights to take a step back and say, hold on, am I guilty of embodying the same hateful prejudices which led to the Holocaust? And shuts us down and shuts us up, even as Israel rolls out its own Holocaust against Palestinians. 
It exploits a noble, healthful, healthy indignation we cultivate in ourselves in good faith in order to support the horrific genocidal nightmare in Gaza in entirely bad faith. It exploits our good nature to advance a profoundly evil cause. It's, it's despicable. It's depraved. Israel apologists always speak as though all critics of Israel are constantly obsessing over Jews when nothing remotely like that is happening. It's a fantasy. The only reason people like me ever make any mention of Jewishness is because 90% of the arguments made by Israel's defenders rely on babbling about Jews and anti sentinism and those arguments need to be addressed. Yep. If Israel's defenders weren't constantly babbling about Jews and anti sentinism it would never even occur to me to think about those things in relation to what's happening in Gaza, and I'm quite sure the vast majority of people on my side in this issue are the same. When you see mass atrocities on unfathomable horror unfolding in real time in a nonstop deluge of video and photo evidence, the very last thing on your mind is what religious faith the per perpetrators espouse. It's not something normal people think about. Throughout my life, I've had a positive view of Jews and Jewish culture because so many of the people I've admired and been influenced by have been Jewish. But other than that, it's not something that I've really thought about much. This notion that opposition to the criminality of the Israeli government is driven by a demented hatred of Jewish people is a complete work of fiction. People in our society simply do not feel that way about Jews. Real anti sentimentalism does exist, but it's a small fringe view. Normal people just want the mass slaughter of children and the ethnic cleansing to stop. Mm -hmm. If I saw someone murdering a child, there are many things I might say and do, but the very last thing that would ever occur to me would be to wonder what religion he is. It's the silliest, most nonsensical narrative in mainstream politics and media today. And that's why fewer and fewer people are buying it. There's only so many times the boy can falsely cry wolf before the villagers stop running to his defense. Hopefully this desensitization that Israel and its apologists have created doesn't have dark consequences in the future. It's just one more ugly thing that they have birthed into the world that the rest of us will have to bring consciousness to. Yep. And as usual, she's right. Yep. It just... Like, and she has just a, in terms um, of like, she has an article about like murder robots, right? Like, it's like parody, satire of like, mm. if Israel were a giant baby killing murder robot, right? And like, someone's defending it like they would Israel. It's very good. I suggest people go to her website and look it up. Um, but it's indicative yeah. of this problem. So, so if you want to go to the last slide, you actually pulled this for me yep. earlier today. Um, so Malcolm X um, had some stuff to say. Also Hotspot. Yep. Um, shout out to them. Doing good work over um, there. Regarding uh, well, calls of, you know, people saying if he was anti-Semitic. Yep. So, go ahead. Are you anti-Semitic? Anti-Semitic? You've uh, met many of the things that I've read about you, and you've made a mention a couple of times about the Jews and everything, and I'm wondering if you are personally anti-Semitic. No. Uh, how can I be anti-Semitic when the Arabs are semi half the Muslim world are, is Semitic? If I was anti-Semitic, I'd be anti-Arab and anti-everything uh, else. Yeah. No, I think this, that in this country, there's one mistake that the Jews make, uh, they put themselves in a position where whenever anybody gives an objective analysis of the role that they play, uh, they defend themselves by accusing you of being anti-Semitic. And, and uh, a Negro is not anti-Semitic when he says that the, the man who's exploiting him in his community is white, because it is a white man who owns all the stores. Now, is it a, an accident that these whites who own these stores are Jewish? If it's an accident, then uh, the fact that he says the Jew on the corner is exploiting me isn't an anti-Semitic statement. It's just more descriptive of the man who's exploiting him. I mean, yeah, Malcolm was kind of legit. Um, no, but yeah, but I think that's the point. It's just the idea of this. It, this is what we've been seeing that 
any criticism of Israel slash, well, more or less Israel. It's, oh, you're like, you're discounting me for my Jewishness or whatever. It has nothing to do with your religion. We don't give a fuck about your religion. We are, I care more about your humanness and the idea of you committing these atrocities in Palestine. Like, that's what the issue, you just happen to be Jewish. So, um, so that's really just more of the issue that I think, again, Keenan uh, Johnstone had. Um, but anyway, this should be interesting. We're definitely going to follow this, but this should be very interesting because I think this will kind of, um, and, I, and as I said earlier, I think I'm making the prediction we're going to see a lot more, more propaganda, but at the same time, more like clips like kind of what we just saw um probably on twitter over the next week and following so crab get to it you know mm-hmm. <laughs> like you got your work right off of you for the next few weeks um well, but i think just even with social media like just the amount of coverage that we've had of like the I- idf basically saying you know like mow them down like get rid like and i'm gonna use yeah more polite language here, but basically like to, you know, and then uh, annihilate the Palestinians. Like, that's going to be brought up, you know, in court, and if anything, that will lead to more protests, especially in Europe in particular. So, I'm actually really interested to see what will come out of this, and how Israel will try to respond to uh, to um these accusations that South Africa, at least South Africa right now, is making. So, it yeah. should be a fun time. Well, let us know what you think. Your comment. Make sure to share this. You know, we're heavily suppressed, as always. Hit that like and subscribe. Try to get that number to 2K. You should see it right there. You know, make it go up a little bit. 